Static versus dynamic linking. Hopefully at this point, if you've watched several of my videos, you know that static means compile time, whereas dynamic means runtime. When we talk, talk about static memory, you may think that's, that's a variable shared amongst many classes. But the history behind that goes much further. Static variables are variables that uh, have memory created by the compiler at compile time embedded directly into the executable. It's statically created by the compiler compile time. Whereas dynamic memory, new or malloc, we create that memory at runtime. So it's important to know that static is compile time, dynamic is runtime. I have here a moo inside of main. I've declared moo. I have not defined moo. There's no body on moo. So I can try to invoke moo here, which is fine. If the compiler is compiling this compilation unit by itself, the compiler will be happy and leave it to the linker to patch up the the empty space here. Where's Moo actually created? Let me bring up this command prompt and list the contents of the directory if I can get the command line correct. We have mainer.cpp. It's this compilation unit. I've saved it into this C++ code folder on my hard drive. And then we have me other C++ file which I put over here. And notice I, I've defined Moo. I've actually given Moo a body and I've also put this declaration specification DLL export on here. And and hopefully you're, just for review, though though I've shown this before, hopefully here's a review. This is a way to say, hey, when I make a library file or a DLL, I want this visibly callable outside that library. That's all that means. And then hopefully this is old hat. Using namespace standards, kind of a bad thing to do, but this is a simple example. I'm fine with it. Now let's say I'm running my own little software company, and I like writing contrived functions that do pretty much nothing except hello world examples, like saying move to the screen and I want to sell this to you and so you and I strike a deal and I sell this code to you for five bucks but I don't want to give you my code I mean this is highly confidential secret way of doing things instead what I want to do is give you a library which you could link against compile against and consume but you don't necessarily need my code directly and so let's let me I'm gonna put this in a vertical tab group so we can see these side by side. You've written this code to try to consume my code and I've written this code. I need to package this code up and give it to you. A few ways we can do that and we've seen in the prior videos in this playlist I could compile a bunch of OBJ files together which would kind of work but then you would have to boy you would have to specify all those OBJ files when you compile it, oh, it'd make your life a headache. So what I could do instead is package all of my OBJ files. In this case, there'll only be one OBJ file, but I could package them all together in a library file, a .lib file, and give it to you. Okay, and you can link against my library file either dynamically or statically, and we're going to see the difference here very shortly. I'm going to bring up the command prompt again and. Let's say I'm on my end. I want to package up this compilation unit. and Let's first do static linking. I want to make a static library. And when you link against my library, you will do it statically. The first thing I need to do is say, hey, compile and link, but only compile. Don't worry about linking. Compile only is what the forward slash C means. Uh, me other C++ file.cpp. Let's run that and clear the screen. List the contents of the directory. We now have an OBJ file. We've seen this in prior videos in this playlist. This OBJ file, again, I could give it to you and you could make that as part of your compilation process, but that would be a headache. Let's go a little further and create a static library, something you can link to statically. And The way we do that, kind of a roundabout way of doing it, but there's this lib tool for libraries built in with the Visual Studio tools available via this Visual Studio command prompt. I'm going to say library slash out, and I'm going to call it Jamie's, I don't know, Jamie's library, how about that? Jamie's library dot lib, lib short for library, and the input file, the only file I, only OBJ file I want in this library is me other, other C++ file dot OBJ. Hit enter, looks like it cranked away, list the contents of the directory, and now we have this, this library file. I've taken this OBJ file and pumped it into this library file. I have statically put it in there so it's a static link library. Now on your end, you've written this really cool moo consumption code to consume my moo function that's residing in this 
library. And just to prove to you we no longer need the OBJ file, I'm going to erase star.obj, clear the screen, list the contents of the directory. All we're left with is this library. I'm going to compile mainer.cpp, this file here, your file, and I'm going to statically link against this static link library. So compile and link mainer.cpp. I want to link against my, oh, it's Jamie's library.lib. Hit enter. Looks like everything compiled just fine. Let me clear the screen, list the contents of the directory. We now have mainer.exe. And if I run mainer.exe, I'm hitting tab there for auto completion. You'll see, oh yes, it prints moo. And just to prove to you that we've statically linked, I can erase this lib file. And what does it mean to statically link? Well, the compiler essentially copied and pasted the machine instructions inside of this lib file. It, it copied them out of there and put them directly into the executable. Okay, in fact, I actually want to note the size of the executable here. Let me get the Windows snipping tool up here. If it'll open. Come on, snip. Snippity snip. There we go. The snipping tool. And I'm going to just grab this portion of the screen. And that's our static linking. Okay, notice mainer.exe is 99,000 bytes. Just, just let's tuck that away for a little later in the video. Again, when we compiled this mainer.exe, the machine instructions were copied statically copy the compiler linked it in statically it's it's right there in mainer.exe so if you want to change or if i want to change if i want to change my code over here and give it to you you have to recompile your executable again in fact just to prove to you that that code was copied and pasted i'm going to erase jamie's library.lib and notice mainer mainer still runs just fine it prints moo the code is embedded in the executable. So that's static linking. The compiler linked it. It was copied and pasted into there. Let's do dynamic linking. I'm going to erase. Let me. Actually, I'm going to pause the video and just erase all the other files and start all completely over again with a clean slate except our two input files. Don't blink. Wow, look how fast I am. Let me list the contents of the directory. Again, we're at the very bar bare bones beginning. We have me other C file and mainer.cpp text files right now we need to we need to turn them into something so this time now that i want to ship my code i don't want to make a static library because every time i make a static library and you compile against my static library then if i change my static library you also need to recompile your code oh what a headache what a headache i wonder if there's a way we could push this process to runtime where instead of you linking at compile time and copying and pasting my code into your executable. And I say code, but it's really the native machine instructions out of my lib file. But either way, instead of you copying and pasting that into your executable statically at compile time, I wonder if there's a way we could link dynamically at runtime. Okay, static linking versus dynamic linking. We want to link at runtime. Well, well watch this. I'm going to say compile and link on my end. We need to we need to create something from my CPP f unit. I'm trying to give you this awesome code here. And I'm going to say LD, that's, that stands for link dynamically, I believe. I'm pretty sure it does. And then uh, the name of the output file, slash FE, I'm going to call it my dynamic library dot DLL. Okay, notice the DLL now. I'm not specifying a lib. I'm specifying a DLL dynamic link library. Let's link at runtime. And then again, it's me other C++ file.cpp. This C++ file with all this in there. Hit enter. Cranks away for a while. Looks pretty good. Let me clear the screen. List the contents of the directory. And notice what we have now. Notice what we have now. We have a DLL file, a dynamic link file. And we also have a lib. Okay, we also have a lib. But let's compare the size of this lib, this dynamic, dynamic-ish lib, with the static one we did before. Let me bring this back on. 1,900 bytes, and the last one was, or yeah, 1,900 bytes. Last one was, wow, 68,000 bytes. The lib file was much larger in the static world because all the code resided in the lib file. In order for you to copy and paste out of my lib into your exe with static linking, 
the code, the native machine instructions, have to be sitting there in the lib file. But in this case, with dynamic linking, the code's not sitting there. The code's sitting in the dynamic link library file. Notice the size of the dynamic link library file. It's much larger than the lib file. All right, the lib file is just kind of an intermediate stop. When you compile against my code, your linker wants to know, hey, I need to resolve this moo call somewhere. And so it will look in the lib file and see, hey, moo, its address will be resolved dynamically, and it, and it sits inside of this DLL file, which we'll need at runtime. So at runtime, we'll finish that up. And so at compile time, the linker's like, okay, cool, I'll just patch that up to dynamically find moo inside of this dynamic link library at runtime. Let's compile this code against what we have here. Let me a cursor back in here. I'm going to say compile and link uh, mainer dot or mainer mainer dot cpp and again we want to link in my dynamic library dot lib. I'm hitting tab there for auto completion. We want to link against that and and then it cranks away and everything's just fine. Let me clear the screen, list the contents of the directory. So now we no longer need the lib file unless you want to compile your code again. All right? That lib file was only necessary for linking and the linker saw, oh, okay, at runtime we'll, we'll resolve what moo really means here at runtime and it will be inside of the dynamic link library. And you can see again we have mainer.exe. Let's actually run mainer.exe. Just prove this works. Mainer.exe, and we get the moo. Very cool. But what happens if I turn around? I'm going to erase uh, my dynamic link library.lib. Okay, just like we did before. And then mainer.exe. Okay, still runs just fine because mainer.exe, all the executable cares about now is the DLL file. The compiler worried about the lib, but the executable is dynamically linking, linking at runtime against the DLL file. Well, what happens if I erase my dynamic link library.dll? Hit enter, mainer.exe, and boom! We can't link to that dynamic link library anymore at runtime. It says, hey, um, um, program can't start because my dynamic link library, it's missing! How am I supposed to run code that doesn't exist? We no longer copied and pasted it statically into our executable. It's trying to link to it dynamically. The DLL is gone. Oh, well, since we are dynamically linked, say you call me up and you say, oh, Jamie, I lost that DLL file. Can you give me a new one? Oh, yes, I can give you a new one. In fact, it's new and improved. Instead of saying moo, it says moo-er. You're like, oh, okay, that sounds good. That sounds good. So on my end, I need to I need to recreate that DLL. So let's, let's do just that. I'm going to say compile and link. Again, link dynamically, link dynamically. Uh, the output file name must be identical to what we had before, my dynamic library dot DLL. And then the input file, again, it's my other C++ file, but this time with the new and improved mooer in there. So me other C++ file, hit enter. Looks like everything's good there. Let me clear the screen. List the contents of the directory. We now have our DLL file again. New and improved this time with Moor in it. Notice I'm not recompiling your executable. If this was static linking, I would have to recompile your executable so that when we compile your executable, it would copy the code out of the lib and put it in the exe. But the code's not in the lib, just the linking points for the linker at compile time, the compile time linker points are there, but we're done with that. We've compiled your executable. I've just replaced my DLL. I've shipped you a new DLL. You're stoked. You don't have to do any work. You don't have to recompile your executable. You run your executable, hence the term runtime, and at runtime, dynamically, you will link against my DLL. Hit enter, and there you go. There's my new and improved DLL coming out. Moor. Okay, isn't that cool? I can compile on my end over here without forcing you to recompile. That's kind of the beauty of dynamic linking. Whereas static linking, that's compile time linking. It's a copy and paste job of the code 
uh, in, into your executable, hence making your executable bigger and making it less flexible. Of course, there's a little bit of runtime overhead by linking to the dynamic library. There's n it's not ever been a huge amount of overhead that's really gotten in my way, though. So there you go, static linking versus dynamic linking.